You know, I've always had this kind of fascination with a movie that's sole purpose is marketing like a very specific product. Absolutely. And we've got like a bit of a history with that. I'm not just talking about like James Bond, you know, he'll use a car or a gadget or whatever. Those are clearly- <laughs> James Bond presents cars. <laughs> Get a car. Are you walking to work? What are you doing? Get a car. <laughs> so I'm not talking about like putting a product into an existing narrative. I'm mm. talking like, and there's been a few examples of this, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was funded and made specifically to sell a new Quaker Oats Wonka bar, right? What? The bars were- Do you were... mean the new one or the old one? The, the old one in the 70s. What? Yeah. I don't remember a Quaker Oats bar in that movie. Well, they had a weird chemical formula in them and they had to recall them all. So it didn't end up happening at that particular time. Wow. Transformers the movie, the animated one, mm -hmm. which we'll probably talk about soon, is just to sell a new line of toys. Absolutely right? it is. And, and making sure that kids couldn't play with the old line of toys by killing them all. <laughs> Ironhide gets shot in the head, James. Yeah, good. He's begging for his life and they shoot him in the head. I like it's it. It's a kid's movie. Ooh, as a kid, I loved that. Yeah. I felt justice, Mason. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Like Mac and Me, for example, is just like a McDonald's commercial and also used by Paul Rudd to trick Conan into watching that clip of a kid falling off a cliff or whatever. This movie, though, The Wizard, please mm. leave a like, mm. it is the most roundabout way to promote Super Mario Brothers 3 it kinda is, isn't that it? you could ever do. Yeah. I mean, for me as a kid, mm -hmm. you could just show me clips of a video game. Right? Which is what I liked this movie for as a kid. Maybe not as much now, but nowadays, they'll just make a movie about Mario. Yeah. You know? Twice now. Yeah. What a bizarre narrative, though, you mm, know? What a long bow to draw. They've clearly gone, okay, we want to make it, you know, a sort of a coming-of-age thing. We want it to be a little bit stand-by-me. We want it to be really low-stakes Rain Man. Yeah. We want all this sort of stuff. We want to open with a little kid walking down the road for three minutes. <laughs> three full minutes. <laughs> yeah. We want to see how many people leave the cinema. So the, narr so the narrative of this is... There's two kids. Yep. Children of divorce. There's technically three kids, but Christian Slater doesn't do anything. Well, there was four kids. Because mm. the inciting incident yes. to one kid wanting to go to California, which we will not spoil here, we'll come back to it, mm. is that his twin sister drowned. Yeah. This is the narrative of this movie, promoting Super Mario Brothers yeah. 3. And he's so traumatised... He can only say the word California and head for California. Yeah, yeah. Like Why? We don't, we don't know. But also, like, his family is split up and we've got, like, Fred Savage and their father, Bo Bridges and Christian Slater in this mm. movie. And there's child kidnapping and endangerment. There's video game addiction. There's underage gambling. What an era of movie making, Mason. Mm. Pretty fascinating stuff. Very much so. And Nintendo approved this, apparently. Yeah. Wow. After, well, this and then Super Mario Brothers, the live action movie, which we've talked about before. We're not approving anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, they really kind of, they held on to that super tight for a really long time. And for good reason, I feel. Do you remember watching this as a kid, though? This is the first time I've ever seen this movie. Okay. I, I don't know why. I loved video games. I love this era of video games. Yeah. But I think I knew the twist. I knew, twist. I say like it's a... What a twist. Do you mean the... Whose head's in the box? <laughs> What's in the fucking box? California. Uh, I knew that they were introducing Super Mario Brothers 3 in it, and I'd already, I'd already seen... I already knew yeah. about Super Mario Brothers 3, James. You know why? Because I read Electronic Gaming Monthly. Thank you for bringing that up. Well, also, this came out so close to the release of Super Mario Brothers 3, like at the end of 1989. And that's fascinating for like a month until that game comes out. Right. Then everybody's already played it, and they're like, we don't necessarily want to watch a kid play it on the screen. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. what? We'll play it. We'll talk about that later. But, you know, as a kid, I would have been excited to see, and I was excited from my vague memories of this, of seeing, like, Super Mario Brothers 2 and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Rad Ridge Racer, whichever one that is, Mason, and Mega Man and Super Metroid, or Ma I think it was just regular Metroid, <laughs> and Contra and Ninja Gaiden. But now, as an adult... Even if you're a kid now, if you want to see this, there's a million hours of it on YouTube. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for me, the interesting thing about this movie is this bizarre narrative that's weaved around it and not so much the split seconds of video game playing mm. that we might see Christian Slater play in a hotel sure, or, yeah. or whatever. I guess Christian Slater's role in this is to subtly introduce video gaming to Bo Bridges, his dad, yes. and then get him addicted to, to video games. Exactly. Huh? Well, Bo Bridges swore off video games since his brother Jeff Bridges got trapped in a weird video game world. <laughs> that must be the case. That's so, you right. know, I can understand that. But what I also like about this movie is 
What a weird, mean world. And by that I mean I guess it's a lot like the real world because <laughs> there's multiple muggings. Yeah. They get mugged for $87 by two truckers at That's one right. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mugging children. And also, I guess, you know, this was a dire economic era because it came after the big crash, the big video game crash, Mason. Oh, I thought you meant just generally in, in, in human history. <laughs> there was also a big crash around this era. But I just love the weird and mean little hijinks. There's a moment where Jenny in this yeah. just clean knocks out Fred Savage with a punch. <laughs> yeah, and there's that weird stock punch sound, which Indiana gets used Jones again later. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, which reminds me, that, I mean, look, what I liked about it, great casting, Fred Savage, obviously yeah. Christian Slater, little Jenny Lewis. I didn't know she acted. I thought she was a, the musician in the band Rilo Kiley. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, now you know. It's good to know things, isn't it? Yeah. But speaking of the mean world, there's like a trucker who seems to be like mentally not all there and... He looks like a giant Jenny Luigi. Keeps, <laughs> Jen, Jenny keeps taking advantage of him. Yeah. yeah. Telling, him, telling him lies so he'll beat up a man and yeah. so forth. Getting him to gamble. Oh, absolutely. Oh, this is also a bad mother movie. Oh, my God. Is it ever? Like, it's all about the bad mums in this. Yeah. J- Jenny Lewis's character, she's like, well, I'm I'm on this journey because my mum got addicted to gambling and it broke up our whole family and now I live in a trailer or whatever. And the other family, the, the mum's like, well, I don't... I'm split. I'm I'm divorcing. I'm splitting up this family. I'm getting with bad business dad, <laughs> who's like I don't understand. Kids I only love business. I love wearing a tie and doing a business. And she's a bad mom. She's like I don't care. I don't care about some of my kids. Yeah. I only sort of care about one of my kids, which is why I'm sending him to a school for bad disabled boys or whatever. Yeah. Wayward sad boys. Mm. But I do enjoy Bo Bridges and his kind of Smokey in the Bandit style hijinks with the child kidnapper mm. who's been sent by big business dad yeah, yeah, yeah. across multiple states to kidnap this child. And I, you would understand why he's so successful in this job, why he's in such demand, because he just looks like a man you would trust with kids. <laughs> he looks like a man who would come up to you and go... Have you seen these kids? I'm not explaining why, I just need to get these kids. And you'd go, yeah, they're over there. Yeah. You wouldn't go, hello, police? Yeah. Like the precursor to Robert Patrick's T-1000, mm. except he's just burnt out and really bad at his job. Oh, what a horrible man. But he does get his comeuppance because he gets accused multiple times of touching a 12-year-old girl. Yeah. That's an ongoing joke in this That's movie. That's a fun joke. <laughs> That's a fun joke. A fun joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, we got to talk about the power glove scene. Oh, yeah. This piece of tech had just come out. I thought out. you were going to say piece of garbage. Well, I'm going to get to that, yeah. It had just come out, so I think perfect opportunity to market this thing because what an absolute piece of shit that did not work yeah. and was completely pointless to any kind of playing experience. It's the metaverse of its day. It really is, yeah. Just the thing, it's way easy to operate whatever you need to use just with the regular controller. Exactly. You know? Nintendo had so many bizarre licensed and unlicensed peripherals and they're all terrible yeah like rob the robot Uh i mean i've seen the angry video game nerd video mason and the gaming historians video as well mason Uh two uh wonderful channels about retro gaming from that have slightly different spins on it mason oh yeah (laughs) and just just garbage and i guess you know it it needs to be brought up because somebody else will like the actor who plays the power glove kid Maybe don't Google that. Maybe don't Google it. I went to the uh, the Wikipedia page for The Wizard. Yeah. And I was like... What are they doing now? Well, I was like, because I'm like, this guy's got a bit of charisma, you know? Uh, what did he do after this? And he's the one person on the cast list that doesn't have a clickable link. Mm. And I think he should, <laughs> but for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Completely agree. I also enjoy like they managed to squeeze in. Well, it's the whole thing again is marketing for Nintendo. The Nintendo Game Counselor scene. Oh yeah, that's right. Because which they, was a real thing. They don't know what games are going to be played at this video Armageddon tournament, but they know it's going to be Nintendo. Mm. So they insist that this kid who, who doesn't speak and is clearly very traumatized. Some kind of whiz. He's some sort kid. of whiz kid. Uh, they should call it the wi- anyway. Um, they're like we should train him on like ninety games, yeah. just in case one of them. You know what? I'm you're not going to announce this ahead of time? That means that rich kids have the advantage. That's true. Most kids don't have 90 games. They've got one game and it's bad. They picked the wrong game. Also, where did these guys get all the games? Rich kids. Oh, they stole them. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I meant they're rich kids. But oh, yeah, yeah, maybe they stole them from rich kids. Maybe. I don't know who owns anything in this because everybody's just stealing from everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Who's the original purchaser of anything in this movie? Was there like a massive financial crisis around this era? Yeah, was, there was. You know, truckers... Knocking over these kids for 80 bucks or whatever? <laughs> Madness. <laughs> yeah. Train him on all these games, 90 games or whatever. And then they're like, we should call the Nintendo helpline. Uh, uh, 
What's you know, the number? Exactly. Uh, and and this guy's, you know, super helpful and whatever. But I kind of feel like for most Nintendo games, you'd just be like, you just don't get hit by the thing. Yeah, so much of it is that. It's either don't get hit by a thing or you missed an invisible door. And yes. that's why you've been... That, that you would never know was there and that's why you're stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. But also, right. like, what is the premise of this competition? Like, surely most of these games are not a visual spectacle that you would want kids to be... Wa- like, they're, they're not going to be thrilling kids. Tetris is a perfect example. Like, it's that's a game where... You can see what's happening in real time and you understand it and you see the score and you see, you know, the tension rises as yep. the, 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 all the Tetris blocks rise up. But some of these some of these games, it's like, oh my God, look how far he's getting in Castlevania 2. <laughs> Is he? I don't know. He leaned down and a tornado took him because <laughs> he was holding a cross or something. Is he dead? Is it good? Is that good? <laughs> There is a lot of people saying, oh my God, he got all the points. That's good, I think. That's good, I think, yeah. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying is there's almost no way to make people playing 8-bit arcade or Nintendo games exciting on the big screen. (laughs) Well, maybe that's why they show it so sparingly. You you get a glimpse of Ninja Turtles and Mm. you're like, wow, look at that underwater section. There's a moment in this where the three, uh, our three intrepid kids who want to get across to California, they're like, we're going to hustle some people. And there's some businessmen playing a video game (laughs) and they're like, Hey, fellas, you want to play against a real champion or whatever? And then it just cuts to later and they're like, we got them. We hustled them. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you the, the reason they didn't show any of that is because obviously the, the adults would be like, no, we're not paying actually. Yeah, no. And you can't do anything about this and we're going to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a moment in the video when the video game tournament starts. It's just like 10 kids on stage in front of regular sized TVs yeah. that the audience can't see. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, whoa. I feel like the whole movie should have been focused around the tournament, or at least we see more of it. Because, you know, I, this actually whole thing was based around, like, very loosely the Karate Kid. And you see that through line. Mm. There's even a montage with Nintendo Power Hotline or whatever. Right, <laughs> you yes. know, like a training montage. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, but they even take a break during the tournament to have a little run around, and it's like... You don't need to do a little run around in the middle of this, okay? Let's just let's no, let's but, do no, the but tournament. adult men need to be accused of touching kids. That's true, they do. You're so. absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, also, if you look at the controls that they're playing on for when the the big reveal of Super uh-huh. Mario Brothers three, it's like this giant joystick with a ball on the end. Yeah. It's enormous. Mm. It reminds me of the Australian TV show Amazing, hosted by James Sherry Mason. Uh-huh, sure. There's a local reference for you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense in like the nights. Who's Putting the points into the knight's running Great machine. Question, James. And, mm. and like, I don't even understand how that works. I don't know. Because he goes back to the start of the game, Super Mario Brothers 3, twice. Uh-huh. And you'd think that would be it for him. You'd, that, you'd think that would eliminate his points. It seems it's like some... Oh, <laughs> some of it is like, okay, who can play the longest without getting eliminated? Sometimes it's points. Sometimes it's how far do you get. Like, if you yeah. if you finish the game, I guess you would be the winner by default, but if nobody finishes the game, it's who got the furthest or who got the most points, yeah. depending on the games. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is madness. But also a joystick. Are you kidding me? Give them a D-pad. Exactly. Give them a They've D-pad. They've all trained on the D-pad. It's not very visually interesting, though, is it, to give them a D-pad? No. Yeah. None of it is. <laughs> it's all bad. No, I think that reveal of, like, the big screens opening up, like, seeing Mario on a screen that big. Yeah, all right. Like, but, incredible. But also, if I were a little kid and I'm like, oh, there's a video game competition happening in the room, I'd go in the room and I'd see the 10 kids on the 10 little screens and be like, I can't see anything. I'm going to leave. Yep, yep. So most of those kids would be gone before the big Mario 3 reveal. Exactly. I was just going to say, you know what What I did like? There was no scene in this where somebody's like, you can't play video games. You're a girl. Oh, you notice yeah. That? That's it's true. Just, it's just regular. People are playing video games. People are playing video games. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that guy plays with that girl's pigtails in a weird way. Boy, does he. Yeah. And you don't like that? I don't like I that. I don't like it either. Yeah, nice. Yeah. We're on the same page. So the reveal at the end of this, the California twist, if you will. So our, the M. Night Shyamalan style that's twist. That's right. The wizard, the, our little friend the wizard, he yep. wins the game tournament and everybody's like, we're, we're on board with this kid now again. We're all... Because we're, he won us $50,000 after right. a video game and financial crash. <laughs> all it took was a once-in-a-lifetime win from this kid and he's in our back in our family again. Hooray! You still have to live in that weird home, though. That's right. And so then they're driving through California and they see like this strange little dinosaur park. Mm-hmm. And the kid's like, California! It's from Pee Wee Herman and as well. And then the car stops and he gets out and, the, and he, he runs out to this dinosaur park and they're like, where are you going? What's happening with this kid? And they never see him again. <laughs> That's right. He's gone. They follow him in there 
they find him. He's sitting down in this little dinosaur park, and he opens up his little his little lunchbox of treasures. Yep. And he shows them a photograph of them all as a family in this dinosaur park. All the all the the brothers and the mum and the dad and the and the the little sister who died. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we were all here. <laughs> Not that long ago either. Quite recently. Everybody looks the same age in this photo. You didn't figure that out? Mm-hmm. You didn't you didn't look at this kid who was clearly traumatized yeah. by the death of his sister. Didn't open his little box of trinkets. He kept saying California and walking towards California. And none of you, none of you, not the the, the dad, the mum, Mr. Businessman, <laughs> the school counselor or whatever, the people in the Christian Slater. Christian Slater, you you're better than this Christian Slater. You're better, you're in, you're in Mr. Robots. <laughs> You've got a fine analytical mind, Christian Slater. You were in cuffs. <laughs> None of you went, oh, California. Oh, like that time we went to California. Six months All ago. All together. Yeah. Do you remember that? Wild. You didn't even figure it out when you were going into the dinosaur park. Oh, that's the dinosaur park we all went to. <laughs> you were in the dinosaur park. You didn't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Anyway, green trivia. Sure. But also the guy who shouts Rodney. Yes. Rodney. 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 So uh, you're going to hate this, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> you don't know that about me. All the video game footage in this game is pre-recorded. No, I do hate that. Thank you. <laughs> you're right. You yeah. know me so well. Uh, so I looked into the background of the Nintendo hotline, including costs. Apparently, they received, between 1987 and 1995, 42.6 million calls. And the idea for this hotline was that it was initially free, because they just want to get the word out uh-huh, there. Sure. But then it became the cost of a local call. And then as of 1995, it was 95 cents per minute in the US. 95 cents a minute? Yeah. And like, there was, as you mentioned, like Nintendo Power and whatever. We had Nintendo magazine system here or whatever, Something didn't like, we? Yeah, we did. That's right. Yeah. And those guys are like shuffling through just binders of uh-huh. <laughs> Nintendo hand-drawn maps and stuff, mm. I assume. So director Todd Holland said that Universal demanded to cut down the length of the shooting script, right? So he actually shot the entire thing and it ended up being about 150 minutes, but this was then edited down to 100 minutes for its theatrical release. But the full length 150 minute cut, which we should have watched, Mason. I, didn't I don't know think we should existed. have. Uh, was it more sad family stuff? I, I it was hope more so. sad family That's stuff. That's the stuff I like in this. The slow walk along the, the road, <laughs> the desert road by the kid at the start is 53 minutes long. <laughs> And that was actually released for the first time in 2020 on DVD and Blu-ray. Ah, uh, now, oh, you're going to hate this as well. Some prom- you don't know that about me. Some promotional artwork for the, no, mo- I hate this. for the movie shows Fred Savage wearing a power glove on oh. his left hand. However... That's a right-handed glove only. Exactly. It is believed- As a lefty, I know that. Yeah. I know they never made a lefty version. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm furious. Well, I was going to say, because, yeah, they never produced a left-handed power glove. And good, because it's against God and nature. Now, I don't know if you know this, but this feature... I bet I don't know it, and I hate it. Uh, I think you'll like this one. Oh, yeah. This features a very early appearance of a mulleted... Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. It's That's Toby Maguire. <laughs> I saw him. He's one of he's one of Lucas's goons. He's like, yeah, get him. Yeah. No, I don't think he ever speaks, He doesn't say anything, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful to see you, Toby Maguire. Imagine a mulleted Spider-Man. Oh, my God. Right? There was a mulleted Superman. Why can't we have a mulleted Spider-Man? Great question. Uh, the box office for this on a budget of $6 million, it only made $14.3 million, which is an okay return. Like, this made mm. its money back. But I think... Did as- it make its money back on uh, Nintendo well, Hotline? That's what I was going to say. I think as a promotional tool, yeah. even if you didn't see this movie, everybody knew about this movie when I was a kid. Right. And I think as a promotional piece, it does its job. Right. And I just want to say also, Ben, who edited this with Lawrence, he absolutely loved this movie. He was enamoured. He was enraptured. He felt all the emotions. And I understand where he's coming from because I think there are genuinely touching, I mean, illegally and also legally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's (laughs) some alleged touching. (laughs) Uh, I think there are some, like, nice family moments and good kind of interpersonal Mm. relationship stuff in this. Genuinely. I mean, look, you're probably right. You know, I think everybody's charming in this. Bo Bridges especially. I think it's a delight. And Christian Slater. He was in cuffs. You, you better believe he was in cuffs. Yeah. Anyways, uh, if you want to see these early, and you might want to, because we've got a big week next week, Mason. Here's the That's hint. Right. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? 
All you need to do is head over to bigsandwich.co where the videos always go up there early. In addition to our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that normally comes out Monday, but it comes out there on Sunday. But it's got its own YouTube channel and Apple and whatever. We're going to be talking about the new Mario movie, aren't we, Mason? Yes! And there's also bonus podcast movie commentary. So many things there that you might be interested. Or just stay, stay subscribed. Stay subscribed. Listen to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Listen to the man Rilo Kiley. Run to the podcast like a little animated jousting night. All right. Thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.